today we're talking about Harry so well I guess we have to drink right crystal crystal well I misplaced my cheers sweatshirt I don't know where it is I guess it's lost in action <laughs> it's lost oops it's lost in action oh mamma mia you know what cheers <laughs> i think i'm i think i'm going to give up a party right we invite harry we'll drink get drunk like pigs we'll smoke pot and maybe snort some cocaine <laughs> it's going to be a, the hell, a hell of a party everybody's invited okay oh. oh heaven youtube is full of individuals claiming that megan markle is a narcissist how do people who have never met her know that and who is a narcissist the name comes from greek mythology narcissus was a young man who fell in love with his reflection in a pool of water. He became so impressed with his image that he spent the rest of his life admiring himself. Frankly, everybody is a narcissist. People like admiring themselves. Of course, there are exceptions. I noticed that character trait in the good old days before digital photography. When I handed printed pictures, I took of my friends and acquaintances they would go through them without any interest until they came across the one they were in. The whole face would light up like a Christmas tree. As a photographer, I was disappointed um, as I took a lot of artistic pictures, but people were not interested in them, only in those they were in. Psychology developed a definition of narcissistic personality disorder. People who suffer from it have an unreasonably high sense of their importance. They need and seek too much attention and want people to admire them. Well, that is basically all women on Instagram, and that is millions of them. When it comes to Harry and Meghan, there is something going on, and that something is political. Why this woman? Meghan Markle got so many breaks from the Queen like no one else before her. Grace Kelly, the Princess of Monaco, was banned from Buckingham Palace because she was former actress and Irish. So yes, the Queen was racist, but not the way the press reports on racism. The haters of Meghan call her a D actress and so on. It doesn't matter if she's a D actress or an A actress. A actors don't get where they are by talent. If the Harvey Weinstein affair didn't teach the people anything about how Hollywood works, then nothing will. Most A actors are pretty lame, have little talent, and have an ego bigger than Megan's. Megan was a millionaire when she met Harry. She earned um, $50,000 per episode on TV. That is more what majority people in the US and Canada earn in a year. In Canada, Meghan was a friend of Sophie Trudeau, a wife of Canadian Prime Minister, and Jessica Mulroney, who is a wife of the son of former Canadian Prime Minister. That is like being a friend of Jill Biden or Michelle Obama in the United States. Meghan was politically well-connected and politically active before she met Harry. Harry made public statements about wanting to be a private citizen long before he met Meghan, but he couldn't move out of the palace because he had no money. His whole life would be that of dependency on his father if it weren't for Meghan. Meghan provided him with a way out. She provided money, and the opportunity to legally move to the United States, something that all other girls Harry dated could not. If he married Cressida Bonas, he would be living in a cottage in London, walking behind William and Catherine for the rest of his life. Meghan gave Harry a $100 million contract. Without her, Netflix would have no interest in Harry. 
nobody would be publishing his book. Well, not at the scale of the insane promotion we have just experienced. Don't forget that the ghostwriter that wrote Harry's book was paid about $1 million. Megan made it happen. Megan made the $14 million mansions in California happen. He now lives better than William and Catherine. A lot of people say that Megan changed Harry, that he isn't himself. She didn't change him. She brought out the things that were hidden from the public. What you see is the real Harry, a drug addict, a junkie, with an enormous ego who, like Diana, wants to be famous. Harry was in magazines. I looked through people's magazines from several years ago. and He was in every issue, but he wasn't paid for it. The magazines printed stories about him and the magazines were making money from those stories. Now Harry makes money on his stories. There is nothing wrong with that. Also, Harry, with the help of Meghan, accomplished what <clears throat> Edward and Simpson could not. Edward was financially dependent on the palace for the rest of his life. Harry is independent to a certain degree, of course. Uh, he is a Netflix soap opera actor, a contract employee. To say that Harry married down isn't correct. Harry is a junkie with an exaggerated ego and sense of self-importance who has always traveled in drag circles of actors, well, Courtney Cox bringing mushrooms to parties. He has never dated any, uh, any of European princesses, so Meghan is on his level. Harry is high on pot all the time, or whatever he is taking. Is Meghan into drugs too? There is something going on behind the scenes. Megan is backed by very powerful people, more powerful than the royal family. Are these people trying to bring the British monarchy down by using Harry, the drug addict? Well, I don't know. But the millions of dollars the media spent on the promotion of Meghan and Harry and the intensity of, of it tells me there is more to it that meets the eye. Yes, that's the trumpeteers, of course, who basically are saying that Prince Harry's book, Spare, has become such an international bestseller. But as we told you over here recently, when we went out to film early in the morning, plenty of books available, all at half price and less. And more importantly, no queues at the till. However, Penguin Random House claim, oh no, people are buying it online, you know. No, 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 wrong. Don't forget that media companies work as money laundering entities. Obama got $60 million for a book that hardly anyone reads. In my opinion, that was a payoff for services Obama delivered to um, them during his presidency. Hillary and Bill Clinton received millions for speeches and donations to the nonprofit. That's how these people are paid. They cannot be paid directly, uh, they are paid through media companies. So in those cases, it doesn't matter if the media companies lose money on such publications because the whole thing isn't about making money, it's a payoff. When it comes to Harry and Meghan, the birds of a feather flock together. She isn't the one that corrupted him. He was corrupt before he met her. She gave him away to leave the royal family, she cut off her family, he did the same. Now, I don't like this too, but you have to look at the situation objectively. The second born is a spur, that isn't fair, because it doesn't matter how talented the second born is, um, he or she will never be first. Look at Princess Anne. In my opinion, she is so much better than Charles, and she could be a monarch. I see you soon. Cheers, cheers, cheers. In a crystal glass. Bye.